Initially today on Mind Palace Memory Training, I was intending to talk about the method used for memorizing names. However, uh, Jordan at The Art of Deduction has recently just done a video himself on the same subject, and since we use the same methods, I decided I didn't want to retread the same ground so quickly. Um, if you're interested in how to memorize names, go ahead and check out his channel. Um, he's got a video up on it in his Minute Memory segment. Um, so today, instead, I will be talking about the method <clears throat> that will also become fundamental and crucial to your Mind Palace Foundation, namely the system called Numbers System, which allows us to memorize exact details and numbers through imagery, much like the Mind Palace. Um, after today, it's my hope that you'll be able to add this system to your already pre-existing Mind Palace that we created in the last video and combine the two methods to expand your mind palace and its potential. Much like the mind palace, the number system requires a bit of preparation on the part of the person who wants to use the method. In the mind palace, you set time aside to map out a location, number the pegs, and then memorize them. With the number system, you are essentially skipping the first step, and you are associating pegs to numbers and memorizing those. Recalling the memorized number works the same as with the Mind Palace, where you have to create a story, the more exaggerated the better, and then later have to recall the details of that story. It works with more than just one digit numbers too, and at a later time I'll explain how to modify this method so you can memorize entire strings of 10 or more characters with little added effort. For today though, let's begin with the basics and just work on creating our number pegs. Start with the number 0 and work your way up to 9. For each number, come up with an image that you can associate to it. Some people pick items that are shaped like the number, a duck for number 2 for example. Some people pick items that have names similar to the number, a door and the number 4. Some people pick items that are directly associated to the number, like the three musketeers being the embodiment of the number 3 or a star having five points. It really doesn't matter how you choose to associate the characters to the objects, as long as it makes sense to you. And you can feel free to mix and match them, just don't get yourself confused. For simplicity's sake today, I will use the pegs I already have memorized, which are borrowed from Ronnie White. For obvious reasons, zero becomes a donut. One becomes a pencil. Two becomes a duck or goose because of the neck looking kind of like a two. Three becomes a pyramid. Four becomes a box. Five becomes a star because of the five points. Six becomes a gun because if you hold a gun at the right angle, it kind of has a handle and a stick thing. Looks like a six. Seven becomes a dice because if you add up two opposite sides of a dice, they always equal seven. 8 becomes a snowman, and 9 becomes a balloon. After this, it's up to you to decide what to do next. Some people decide to count all the way up to 100 and have an image for each and every number from 0 to 100. If that's what you want to do, go ahead. Personally, I found that to be a needless exercise, especially with memory tricks I will reveal in later episodes of this series. If I ever need to remember numbers that have multiple digits, I simply combine two, num two images together into a one story. I find this to be much more efficient. It's up to you to decide how to proceed, but for today, we will only need 0 through 9. Ever been curious to know how Sherlock Holmes can remember how many steps he's climbed? I'm about to show you now. So, much like Sherlock Holmes, I make it a habit to count every step on a flight of stairs. On this particular flight of stairs, there are 27 steps. Now, once I get to the floor at the top of the stairs, I make it a point to translate and encode that information into an image. Now you may remember my image for number 2 is a duck, and my image for 7 is a pair of dice. In this instance, it may not be too far out of the realm of possibility that my number 2 in this instance would be Howard the Duck, and that my 7 becomes a pair of dice. 
So 27, in effect, becomes Howard the Duck playing a game of dice on the first floor of this room, this building. And that's how I would encode 27. Now you do run the risk of accidentally mixing the numbers up and it becoming 72, but this isn't a problem that I've actually experienced since I can usually keep the information sorted properly in my head. Now, counting the 27 steps from the first flight of stairs and these steps here, we come to 45. Now, for four, you may remember that my image was a box and that five was stars. So on this flight of stairs, we would see a box overflowing with stars, becoming 45. And it's that simple. Using this method, I've been able to remember far more than just how many stairs there are leading up to each floor of a building. I've been able to remember how many of an item I need to restock at work, buy at the store, how many cards have been played in a card game, though don't confuse this for character action object, which I may explain again in a later installment of this series. I've been able to remember license plates, and it finds many other applications in daily life. Take what you've learned today. When you sit down to travel to your mind palace every couple of days, remember to take a moment to count your number system pegs, and before long, you will know your number pegs as well as you know your mind palace. Thanks for watching.